previously on Half Glass Gaming. There's a bomb on the bus! And now, the continuation. Hey, I'm Julian. Welcome to Half Glass Gaming. <laughs> Boy, that bomb on the bus situation was hairy. Good thing we took care of it completely off screen. Yeah. Boy, howdy. That kung fu really came in handy. <laughs> and I don't know that I'm ever going to be able to fly like that again, but I could that time. That was the important part. <laughs> Purple lights flying out of our butts. It's crazy. <laughs> I a... thought I heard you speaking Japanese. <laughs> a little bit. I don't want to press any, uh, and I want to toot my horn, you know, but yeah, I was, uh, I'm a weeboo. Weeaboo? Is that what it is? Weeaboo. Weeaboo? Weeaboo. Weeaboo? My, my favorite thing about <laughs> Fire Emblem right now is that you can visit other people's castles, and half the castles are named Castle Weeb, Fort Weeb, Castle Weeaboo, <laughs> Fort of Weeaboos. See, me, I'm I'm actually obsessed with uh, English culture instead of Japanese, uh, so I think of myself as a Tiaboo. And with that, I'm Julian Watkins. This is another exciting episode of Half Glass Gaming. I got the Rev. I, I am the Reverend. I got the Josh. Just Josh. And I have that Mandy. Hi. Well, there it is, folks. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Half Glass Gaming. I think that's all we have to talk about this week. Uh, wah! In your face, I'm joking. I'm looking at the table, and I'm seeing a delectable snack <laughs> within which lies a piece of paper that foretells the future. It's true, we have fortune cookies. We got fortune cookies, folks, on this episode. I've been meaning to try to make uh, vegetarian pulled pork, which is made out of jackfruit. Wait, I'm sorry. I don't know what pulled pork tastes like because okay. I have been a vegetarian for most of my life. Mm -hmm. But apparently jackfruit is pretty good at mimicking the texture and taste of pulled pork. Wow. If you cook it properly. Mm -hmm. So I've been meaning to try this and I've sort of been waiting to do it on a day when it would be really easy to get another kind of food because I just wasn't sure how it would turn out. And it actually turned out okay. Josh ate two sandwiches. Ate two very tiny sandwiches. Two very mm -hmm. small sandwiches. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if he ate them to be nice. No, they're... To his girlfriend or if they were good. No, they, they were good. And uh, the problem was that the jackfruit that we had that came out of the cans was, was almost all core. And you're supposed to remove the core. Yeah, you need and the so flesh. Yeah, so we, we ended wound up, up with, with barely any jackfruit. Mm -hmm. With just a tiny amount of jackfruit. And... You know, Mandy put some spices and some barbecue sauce in mm -hmm. it, and it was actually really good. But, <laughs> but I mean, did it, did it just taste like barbecue sauce? It's yeah, it tasted mostly like barbecue sauce. Mm -hmm. It had a, it had a bit of a pulled pork texture to it. Do you cook the jackfruit? Yeah, I cooked it in a pan okay. with with seasoning. I used like peppers mm -hmm. and brown sugar mm -hmm. and barbecue sauce mm -hmm. and onion, and cooked it up, and it sort of shreds up to like a different texture. Yep. I had to take out so much core and then once I was cooking the pan, I was seeing there were still pieces of core and I was having to fish them out and it really was not fun to make. Mm -hmm. See, now that's interesting because I think the nation's very first uh, vegan butcher shop just opened up. Yeah, no, I saw that. Was it Seattle where here. it was? Yeah, I saw it yeah. This was the first. But I wonder if that's what they do because they sell like... Um, Korean barbecue, pulled pork uh, substitutes, things of that nature that they swear your father wouldn't be able to distinguish from the real thing. No, I'll go there, but it looks like it's kind of insane mm -hmm. right now. Well, it's brand new. Like, mm -hmm. it's very recent. It's called the Herbivorous Butcher. Er, yeah. Mm, it's on first. That leads me to my first question of the evening. How did you wind up with fortune cookies? Uh, I was going to just make something else because mm -hmm. had a bunch of groceries and it could have made all sorts of meals, but I was so annoyed by the process of picking out core. <laughs> from jackfruit as I tried to cook it that I just wound up ordering Thai food. But we'd already eaten like mini jackfruit barbecue sandwiches so we weren't that hungry so we did not eat our fortune mm -hmm. cookies. But we have them now mm -hmm. so live on air we can figure out what our fortunes are. Yeah. Oh man. Mine is laughter shall fuel your spirit's engine. Hmm. That's kind of a mixed metaphor. I don't disagree. <laughs> All right, mine is kind words can be short and easy to speak, but their echoes are truly endless. Whoa. It's not a very short and easy. 
<laughs> it's the longest fortune I've ever had. Yeah. It's long and unwieldy, I would say. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't I don't actually eat fortune cookies. I just open them. If you eat them, the fortune doesn't come true. We all know that. <laughs> yeah. The best fortune I've ever gotten to this day is a fortune that said, when the time comes, choose the one on the right. Yeah. And I just always want every fortune to be like that. I want it to feel like advice for a very specific moment that uh-huh. may never happen. Yeah. Or just make it feel like you're in a time travel movie. Right. It was really, it was a cool moment. Most of the fortunes that I get are terrible. Yeah, that's true. Because, I mean, if that was in, like, a time travel movie, you know, Keanu Reeves would be like, what? And then, like, <laughs> towards the climax of the movie, he'd be like, whoa, and turn right. That would be the answer. That would be the answer, indeed. Of course, I, I feel like the adding in bed at the end of every fortune, yep. because it's funnier that way. Well, that doesn't work for our yeah. fortunes at all. Kind words can be short and easy to speak, but their echoes are truly endless in bed. Yeah. yeah. That works. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, my two favorite fortunes I've ever had, the first one was... You are smart, for you do things smartly. <laughs> and the other one was, you will soon become more aware of your growing awareness. <laughs> yeah, the most um, enigmatic fortune I've ever gotten, I've documented. It said, running it never runs from us away, but truly keeps his first, last, everlasting day. In bed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. My lucky numbers were 214, 28, 32, 45, 47. So if you use that for the lottery, Jimmy, you're going to have to cut me in. That was a fantastic uh, little thing that we just did there. Uh, yes, have, have you have you guys been to the uh, hibachi buffet here in Minneapolis? No, I got I the last time I went there, I got a licensed fortune cookie. Right, I was about to say they, they've Street? been doing uh, they, yeah, their kung Street. fu panda advertisements in your fortune cookies, and then it tells you to go get another fortune at secondfortune.com. That's bizarre. So hibachi, that's Japanese, correct? Yes. Kung fu panda, it's Chinese, correct? Yes. Really, I mean, Jack Kung Black. Fu Panda is, <laughs> is DreamWorks. Yeah, I suppose. But. That's bizarre. Uh, you know, I've gotten fortunes that are just stupid, inane, corny, or whatever, but I've never had a licensed fortune. Yeah, no, I'd never heard of it. And then Josh got a normal one, and I got a licensed fortune, so I really felt kind of cheated. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. But now I can go to secondfortune.com and just keep getting endless fortunes that tell me to go see Kung Fu Panda 3 in theaters. <laughs> yeah, I got a free download on Amazon for the uh, digital version of Kung Fu Panda 1. It's a, it's a pretty good movie, actually, mm-hmm. if you haven't seen it. I mean, yeah, it's nothing spectacular, but it's well-paced. It's amusing. I like Jack Black. I liked yeah. um, that metal game that he was in. Brutal Legend? Yeah. I don't know, like, I feel like it's a really inefficient way of advertising a movie because the window where you can advertise that movie versus the window of time where you will be giving out those cookies. Yeah, boxes of these cookies. I would find that to be something more suited towards, like, Leanne Chin or (laughs) or, or Panda Express. (laughs) Hello. I mean, they could really just do Subway and give away yeah. little Kung Fu Panda bags. That's and true. that's about, is, I mean, Subway is about as Asian as Kung Fu Panda. So. Well, I do eat my Subway with chopsticks, you know. So There you go. I suppose, yeah. But uh, no, it, it, it just, it felt really weird. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I don't even know that Kung Fu Panda was playing in theaters mm-hmm. when I got my fortune. It probably was. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't follow the Kung Fu Panda franchise. Nor do I. I'm not a Kung Fu Panda aficionado. There were a couple of games, though. Never played them. Didn't care to. Yeah. No, I mean, it's just a really weird example of product promotion. Yeah. Like licensed games, Much I like guess. Much like licensed games. Like yeah. some licensed games where I just, I can't really figure out how they came up with this and thought this is a good marketing plan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think, you know what? That's a good point. I'm going to call a break because we're on the apex of diving in to the topic. I'd like to thank, as always, 2XAA. Wheelie, I'd like to thank uh, Old Navy for all those fabulous deals on pants. Uh, I'm going to get me some of those pants, as Elizabeth Banks says in that annoying commercial. Is, is that what she says? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'd also like to steer you towards uh, Retrovolve.com if you happen to be listening to this somewhere else. Um, on Retrovolve.com, you'll find Half Glass Gaming. Uh, you'll also find um, a wealth of retro... Related video game uh, articles, some of which have been written by our very own Josh. Um, just Josh? Yes, just Josh. 
We are also on halfglassgaming.com where you'll find a uh, detailed list of the games that we mention on every episode in case you want to dive further into the abyss. You know, follow that rabbit winding its way down the uh, rabbit hole, as it were. Almost like Keanu Reeves playing Neo in a movie called The Matrix. <laughs> um, of course, we're also on iTunes. You can follow us there. You can subscribe. You can rate. You can give us four stars hello i think that's the maximum so we'll just say four stars we're also on stitcher radio and look if you're ever in downtown minneapolis and you're looking for a place to park hit me up bro i got the hookup okay so when we come back from the break we're going to be talking about licensed games And we're back from the break. Um, thank you for sticking around. Licensed games. They've got a checkered past. Catch a lot of flack. I've played a ridiculous amount of them. I'm sure we all have to varying degrees of enjoyment. Yeah. Look, let's start at the beginning. Mandy, paint us a tale. Where do they start? I, I always thought that the first licensed game was the Death Race game, but that's not actually true. Based on the David Carradine movie? Yes. Okay. It was actually Fonz. Based on the Henry Winkler character? <laughs> yes. Oh my. It's actually, they just took motocross uh-huh. and they rebranded uh, it as Fonz okay. and made it a Happy Days game and it was because at the time the American version of Sega owned the rights to all Paramount television properties. Interesting. Okay. And so they could use it for free and they're like oh I bet more people will play this if we put Happy Days on mm-hmm. it and so they release an arcade version of motocross that was called Fonz just and the fa- tagline the Fonz. No just Fonz and the tagline was <laughs> TV's hottest name your hottest game. <laughs> the tagline should have just been a. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so he's just riding a motorcycle around, jumping on stuff. Yeah. That's absolutely insane. Who the hell plays games that watches Happy Days? I mean, aren't you just like a fifty-year-old? Uh, <laughs> I mean, if this was nineteen seventy-six. I mean. <laughs> Right. This, this was at a time when Happy Days was much more popular. Yeah, I guess. It's I mean, I think Happy Days is probably so. a lot cooler in 1976. Mm-hmm. Than the in... certainly was, that's for sure. Yeah. But Death Race was also released in 1976, just mm-hmm. later in 1976. And Death Race is really the more interesting story because Death Race was also not conceived as a licensed game. It was originally called Pedestrian. And the object of the game was to run over pedestrians and murder them. And and then people were really offended by that. Yeah. And so they're like, oh, well, let's just see if we can get the, get the rights to something else. And so they got the rights to Death Race. And But then instead of trying to really replicate the plot of Death Race, they made it that you're running over gremlins to save people. <laughs> And look, it's far less controversial. And if you've seen the movie, really, that's the subtext. <laughs> I think. I, I just love the gremlinism there. Yeah. Uh, you know, oh, murdering people. No, no. But murdering gremlins, that's A-OK. Yeah. When will America get over this uh, unjust gremlin hatred? Well, it's hilarious because then, they then could have relicensed the game for the gremlins movie. <laughs> Should have relicensed it for the Troll 2 video <laughs> game because they really didn't care about accuracy. For oh people who God. haven't seen Troll 2, Troll 2 is about goblins. Which takes place in Nilbog. <laughs> Nilbog is goblin spelled backwards. As we My all favorite know. thing about Troll 2, except for the piss on hospitality line, <laughs> is that uh, when his grandfather is showing him an important uh, goblin text, historical mm-hmm. text, it's just the illustrated version of Davy and the Goblin that I owned when I was a little kid. <laughs> yeah. And this is an important <laughs> historical text. Of course, so that obviously. is my favorite thing. Yeah. If you don't want to see Troll 2, you should watch the documentary about Troll 2, oh, which God. Josh has seen. That just breaks my heart. That woman in there who's like, oh. got like mental problems. I mean, that's just, it's rough stuff. The best part of that documentary is when the guy, he's the guy is interviewing the one guy who was on a day pass from a mental institution when he filmed that movie and he was talking about having fantasies about murdering the little boy and he didn't realize that he was talking to the guy who played the little boy yeah. <laughs> in the movie yeah the, like and the guy didn't seem that crazy then he mm-hmm. seemed like a very nice guy who was extremely unstable mm-hmm. at the time they used him as an extra in this movie 
Which, to be fair, I mean, that's probably the only person you could get to be an extra in this movie. Oh, what a good movie. So, the Fonz. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. Death Race. Still a little odd, I think, also. But the 1980s roll around and licensed games... What, they explode? Absolutely. There were licensed games for everything. There was a licensed game based on a dog food commercial. You've got to be kidding oh, me. Oh, no. Maybe. I mean, they just made games out of every single thing they could possibly think of. Purina? But it was a Purina commercial, but uh, it, it wasn't even food. a Purina promotional game. It was specifically based on like one of their ad campaigns. That's just peculiar. It, it's hard for us to realize now, especially us people in our age bracket, to realize mm-hmm. how popular video games really were in the Mm -hmm. early 80s yeah i mean it's probably like disco (laughs) i wasn't making a joke there but okay (laughs) you 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 weren't making a joke and that's why you were making a joke i'm sorry disco is popular (laughs) i mean but video games in 1982 grossed more than the sports industry the music industry and the film industry combined wow i mean that's how much money arcades were making and how popular video games were Mm -hmm. and so really even now when you look at the popularity of games they are not caught up to Mm -hmm. what they were in the earliest days and it's just arcade machines were everywhere Mm -hmm. so you'd go to the grocery store and like a mom would go and buy some groceries and then play a few games of pac-man before she went home and like that was normal they were just everybody played them yeah that's crazy and so everybody wanted in on this so instead of putting their products into movies and having et eat you know is it reese's pieces or reese's peanut butter cups i haven't reese's seen pieces. reese's pieces i haven't seen et in like 10 years okay so i'll forgive that <laughs> they thought let's make an et video game mm-hmm. which and which, we all know how that speaking worked of out which i but, mean like whether it's fair or not, you know, that's sort of like seen as like this almost like final nail in the coffin sort of for games at the time that's considered. Which is unfortunate because it, it really wasn't. Like if you actually play E.T., it, it's not a good game. They wanted the one guy mm-hmm. to finish the whole game in six months. No, it was three weeks. Three, three weeks. weeks. So yeah. even even less time. It was actually five weeks that it took, which I mean still isn't a lot of time to make a game. Even one as simple as E.T., I played E.T. and I couldn't figure out what I was doing. I couldn't figure out why I was dying. I couldn't figure out because why. Because you had a timer. I couldn't figure out why if I went in one green block, I would be okay. Mm-hmm. And if I went in a different green block, I would just die. Mm-hmm. Like it just, like it, it didn't really communicate to its players in any meaningful way to, to give any direction of what you're supposed to be doing. And it was super confusing to play. I didn't find it as terrible as all that. And I mean, considering the fact that E.T., the movie, sucked completely. You know? Right. It was a horrible movie. And I don't know why they thought a game based on it would sell anyway. I don't like E.T. No, I don't know if you're joking, but I like No, I was joking, like but it E.T. is. I mean, it's, you know, whatever. I mean, An interview recently came out with the designer of, of the E.T. game. Mm-hmm. And he was talking about how Steven Spielberg came in and tried, like, an early version of the game. And it was, like, really disappointed. It was like, oh... I was kind of hoping for something a little more like Pac-Man. Mm-hmm. And then the guy was super mad. He's like, fuck you, man. He's like, I was expecting E.T. to be more like and he, like <laughs> some other some other alien movie. And yeah. then... Alien? So licensed games in general. I mean, did they cause the crash? No. I mean, really, the issue was that there were an insane amount of video game consoles mm-hmm. released at the same time. Mm-hmm. There were probably at least 15 game consoles at the on the market at that time with games being produced for all of them and stores couldn't possibly stock games for all of them. So people weren't able to buy games for the consoles they had. Stores weren't able to stock properly and had to send back massive amounts of inventory. Mm -hmm. So some bad games contributed to that, but really it was just that the market was completely oversaturated and that stores couldn't possibly stock things the way they needed to. Mm -hmm. It's similar to the comic book crash in the 90s in that it was mostly caused by retailers having to send back massive amounts of stock so retailers couldn't afford to carry video games anymore and mm-hmm. video game manufacturers had to reimburse partial costs for all this stock being sent back and so they were losing massive amounts of money at the same time. Yeah, right. Now, that'll lead me in to my next question. By and large, why are so many licensed games terrible? I mean, not just conceived as being or thought to have been, but by and large, I mean, a lot of them suck. Why is that? 
mean, game development is kind of a nightmare. Mm -hmm. And I think it's kind of a miracle that any games turn out good when you look at how hard it is to do the simplest things. Mm -hmm. So licensed games have a lot working against them. Sure. I think uh, at least more recently, you know, movie tie-in games, you know, the schedule's rushed. Right. For whatever reason, even if they contain spoilers for the film, they have to come out before the movie traditionally, um, which kind of seems ridiculous. I don't know why they do that. I think there was a Spider-Man tie-in for one of the more recent, lousier ones. Well, I mean, they basically just gave away plot points. Yeah, yeah, but the, you could change it for the the second um, Andrew Garfield Spider movie. Yeah. There was a way to like bring back Gwen Stacy, and I'm not worried about spoiling that because she died <laughs> in she died decades ago. Oh, she died. Yes, I stopped watching the movie seconds before that. <laughs> I've never played the, the the video game based on that, but for some yeah. reason I saw the cutscene where mm-hmm. there's a way to bring Gwen Stacy back to life, and then I wondered if people played the game and had somehow been sheltered from this happening in the comics. Well, there was a really it was shocked. Why didn't they bring her back to life in the movie? There was a, a game for the James Bond movie Pierce Brosnan that had Terry Hatcher in it. I think that's Tomorrow Never Dies. Her character doesn't die in the game, <laughs> but it's like. <laughs> She's murdered in the movie, you know, it's like, what? You know, it seems kind of ridiculous. I don't understand that. So, I don't know. I mean, I guess just is it that their hands are tied, there's time constraints, maybe they have to adhere to a certain formula that's hard to um, realize in games? I mean, so you're trying to do something really hard, which is make a video game. And so one person is trying to do something really hard, but they don't have a lot of obstacles in their way. And another person is trying to do something really hard, mm-hmm. and they have a bunch of obstacles mm-hmm. in their way. Because mm-hmm. traditionally, like you said, they were just uh, co-opted games that either were about to be released or, or hadn't been released. That they just restructure into yeah. the fonts. So it's probably yeah. easier to do. I mean, fonts is as good as the original Motocross was. And I haven't played it. I don't know how good it is. Yeah. All I got to say that. is you better have been jumping sharks. In that <laughs> I game. hope I hope you did. Just elbowing jukeboxes. But, uh, and- <laughs> I mean, they're obviously good licensed games. It's just yeah. hard enough to make a video game. And so if you have a smaller time window, if you have people saying you have to include this and this, mm-hmm. you can't do this, mm-hmm. then it's just going to be... The that much harder. Mm-hmm. Well, I think you look at a game, and I think Josh, you like Cool Spot. Oh, I love Cool Spot. You know, it's like taking a character, but it isn't like that. It's based on a commercial for Cool Spot, so it's like shoehorned in. It's like they were able to sort of develop and flesh out an action game of, in and of itself, a platformer, I guess, um, with this zany character in there. The crazy thing about Cool Spot is they did everything right. Mm-hmm. Like the art was great, the controls felt great, mm-hmm. the level design was really fun, mm-hmm. uh, the music was incredible. Whether it was a licensed game or not, it was a very well made game. Mm-hmm. Like it wasn't a well made game for a licensed game. It was just a straight up mm-hmm. well made game. Yo noid. <laughs> You're standing on the street corner and look at top and you're like, yo, Noid! I mean, another example of sort of taking a a property that has already existed and just kind of developing it into its own sort of video game character, I guess you could say. There's such a mixed reception for yo, Noid in the present. Like, Mm -hmm. I think there was a while, maybe 10 years ago, where it was considered, like, just one of the worst games ever made. And, like, I feel like there's a growing love for it now and it's so weird because i keep finding fandom yeah like there's a a, a emerging yonoid fandom like i don't know where they're coming from it's so weird cult game (laughs) yonoid cult classic Uh uh-huh uh-huh. Well, I mean, a bunch of your favorite games are licensed game because DuckTales is obviously also a licensed yeah, game. Yeah, DuckTales yeah. is great. Chippendale. The Chippendale game is super fun. It looks really good. A lot of yeah. those old Disney licensed games look fantastic. DuckTales looks great still, I think. I mean, the colors and the the controls are pretty solid as well. I mean, it's a fun know. game. Yeah. I mean, DuckTales had the gimmick with the pogo stick. Yeah. And that just felt so new and innovative and fun at the time. It was mm-hmm. like even even today you can go back and play DuckTales and like mm-hmm. 
I guess not until like Shovel Knight has has Which something. Is light. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> what a great name. Has something really like tried to capitalize on that gimmick again, like that successfully? Uh, the monkey, uh, the old man in Donkey Kong. I think oh yeah, he does have the cane, Kong. doesn't he? Yeah, cranky then you have, Kong. Cranky Kong. Yeah, cranky. Then you, you know there there are games that sort of walk this thin line where they're actually almost sort of revolutionary and also licensed tie-in games like GoldenEye. Yeah, I mean, GoldenEye is really one of the most important games yeah. ever made. And I mean, I forget that it's even a James Bond game because all I ever did was mm-hmm. like shoot paintballs at my brothers mm-hmm. in that game. Yeah, I mean, it had a relatively solid single-player campaign. I don't think I ever even played the single-player campaign. I only played multiplayer yeah. in GoldenEye, which is really rare for me. Yeah, I remember trying to burn a hole in a train using a watch or something, you know. But uh, I, I don't know how clear closely it, it adhered to the story of the movie which i think a lot of the times that's where games sort of fall into these traps mm-hmm. um but another solid one spider-man 2 the movie game <laughs> I'm, so- I'm sorry because i'm just thinking about the one where you bring gwen stacy back to life well there is i know that's not DLC, the one you're talking about <laughs> uh, but no i mean shit that that was fucking dope it's the first sort of attempt to sort of bring Spider-Man into the open world. And, I mean, it was like, who gave a shit about this dumb plot line and trying to save some kid's balloon? You know, just being able to sort of fly around that city. and That may have been the first genuinely good Spider-Man game I played. And I played a, a number of them. Uh-huh. Most of the ones on you the... You played the uh, arcade one. Uh, that yeah. one was great. Th- that one was great. But that one wasn't pure Spider-Man. You know, mm-hmm. you had... That was the Carnage one? Uh, that one I played. But the one, the arcade version, uh, arcade game... And we brought in some, like, X-Men stuff. Yeah, it brought in mm-hmm. Namor and Hawkeye. Doctor Doom that's was cool. the final boss, oh, that's right? So like it, it well, but no, because you fought a Doombot. Oh yeah, right. the Doctor. So, it was a, a Doombot was the final. Doom boss. was just chilling somewhere. Doom was eating at Chipotle, yeah, right? <laughs> but but it was called Spider Man. So uh, uh-huh. other than that, like the ones on the Super Nintendo were generally mm. uh, brawlers. Yeah, uh, and you know that that's fun, but it's like it's a brawler. Uh, yeah, I think the PS One. I think it was PS One, the first Spider Man movie game did a fairly decent job considering it couldn't render a full city you're kind of just on rooftops but you're still swinging around slightly open right and that was pretty cool the playstation spider-man game actually wasn't based off the movie uh it was just a spider-man game uh, the one you're thinking of it actually came out like two years before the uh the first toby mcguire spider-man movie did but um but yeah spider-man 2 was the actual open world like that was really well done Mm -hmm. so then you have sort of like this weird sort of sub genre it's almost like the 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 flip side of the coin successful or not um, licensed games exist but then you have these sort of games that are licensed but more or less i mean they're advertising games um what comes to mind for me i don't know like sneak king yeah that was that that was really creepy yeah <laughs> the Which advertisements are around... like that game no but... i mean i don't i didn't play those burger king games but i remember them being really well received mm-hmm. but like oh, burger king's ads around that time freaked me out mm-hmm. no there are some really weird ones and obviously there were games that were really well received like cool spot but then there are ones that people sort of forgot that are just bizarre yeah the one i'm most fascinated by is called darkened sky and it is a fantasy rpg about a girl trying to find her mother and it is a advertisement game for skittles wow Weird. but uh the okay. woman who wrote it uh, she was like hey we, we need you to make a skittles game Mm-hmm. And so at first she was like, you can fire me or not make me write this game. And then she went out and got really drunk. And then she's like, fine, I'll, I'll make a stupid Skittles game. So she basically <laughs> tried to make it as non-Skittles-like as possible. Yeah. And so, it was a Skittles light. It was a Skittles, <laughs> it was a Skittles light. light. Yeah. And so Skittles, she did magic moves and uh-huh. Skittles are what you use for magic power-ups. And so she sent over like an early version of the game to, is it the Mars company that owns Skittles? Uh, that sounds about right. And so she sent over an early version to them. And they're like, well, take out this swear word at the beginning. And she's like, okay. She's like, get rid of any monsters that are snakes. And okay. then it, she was like, what? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, you can't have any snakes in this game. And she's like, can I have monsters that sort of look like snakes? And they're like, yeah, but as long as they're monsters and not snakes. So apparently Skittles and snakes can't go together. 
Yeah, yeah. Mix. yeah. yeah it's just that'll tarnish the Skittles brand. Well, but, really, uh, all she needed to do was reappropriate a boy in his blob, take out the fucking jelly beans, throw on some goddamn Skittles. I mean, that would be a good, like, since Skittle gave, I mean, I feel like that would make me feel positive, heartwarming feelings about mm-hmm. Skittles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't look even remotely like a Skittles game. You would never know, looking at the box art, that had anything to do with Skittles. It was on the GameCube and PC. That doesn't reek of Skittles to me. No, no, not, not particularly. That's, but she did get out not... of video game development after that. She's a novelist now. Yeah. It does not taste like a rainbow. No. <laughs> Jesus, that's weird. So that'll bring us to the elephant in the room. Back to the future. Uh-huh. We did we did a pretty good thorough analysis of that <laughs> game on a, yeah. on a previous episode. I don't think we need to go into uh, it. No, I mean, I mean, it's sort of fascinating, though, because... Like, what if all licensed games were perched that way and not just being terrible? Like, but having that little to do with the premise of something that's really easy to turn into a video game. Yeah, I don't know. I mean... God, how do you fuck that up? Hey, well, first you do. be LJN. Yeah, there you go. It's just, because it, Back to the Taste Future is just so easy to gamify. Yeah. And they just didn't even try. I like the bees thing, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, why, why were there killer bees in Back to the Future? They should make a new Back to the Future about killer bees. A new movie? Yeah. Reboot it. <laughs> Reboot the series and make it all And then, the then they, they don't even have to make a new game. They can just re-release that one. <laughs> yeah. They've they already got a Back to the Future game made. It's got bees just, in it. I they mean, could just uh, take my girl, <laughs> call it Back to the Future about bees, and then the girl dies from bee stings. Or the boy, dies, the from, boy bee dies yeah, from bee stings. Yeah, Macaulay Culkin. The girl, the girl lives mm-hmm. and goes on to start in My Girl too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. What have we done? <laughs> Who have we become? <laughs> so you got licensed games out there, right? You got Chex Quest. I mean, like, <laughs> they do. Have you know Chex what I mean? Quest. Like you just got uh, MC Kids. There's a Chester oh. Cheetah game. There's a Chester Cheetah game. I was Cheetah playing game. that not that long ago. It was actually pretty fun. And then you I think there have... was a, I think there was more than one Chester Cheetah I, game. I played one Chester Cheetah game, and so that one I played was pretty fun. So if there are any garbage Chester Cheetah games out there. No, that I'm not talking about that one. And then you even have games that have licensed products within them. You know, Crazy Taxi, Bring Me to the KFC, you know, and Pizza Hut and all that garbage, right? I actually feel like like video games are way better suited to product placement yeah. than other forms of entertainment are. I don't sure. know why they don't do it more. I mean... Who doesn't think of Powerade when they think of the Matrix? You're playing the Matrix <laughs> game and there's a fucking Powerade machine in there. And you're... But like, you know, you need health. Food is usually used for health. <laughs> Why not just make it real food? Like, that That's makes true. more sense than having a five-minute Subway commercial on Hawaii Five O. You know, and actually... Um, to get off topic, that's one of like the more groundbreaking aspects of the show Seinfeld is that they would just drink Yahoo. Snapple. Or Diet they Coke. had Snapple product placement. Eventually, yeah, products uh, would approach them, or companies would approach them to put their products yeah, in there. And then they had a deal with Snapple. I know because I've, Josh's love for Snapple has caused pretzels. me to do a lot of Snapple you know, research. But nowadays, it's like they'll just have some generic cola or whatever. They're they're being very ironic about. I think that's the thing now is mm-hmm. like there'll be a, a sitcom and all of a sudden there's super obvious about their product placement yeah. and they're like oh who brought this case of coca-cola into the room and everyone's like has a smug look mm-hmm. on their face it's like wayne's world <laughs> well, the best yeah. product placement is the subway stuff on community where they turned it into like a meta plot about human product placement and buying the rights to humans to change their names to subway and live to promote subway and that was somebody really did fuck me for that episode. They got money. Somebody awesome. just is really into giving TV shows um, and money to talk about them. Arrested Development. Carl Weathers kept having his meetings at, at Burger King. You know? <laughs> yeah, and then, like, right. Oh, Carl Weathers is the best. David Cross is like, refills are free. Can you believe that? You know, and it's just like ridiculous. But Okay, so like I was beginning to go off on before we went off on this, licensed games, have there ever been games with unauthorized use of licensed characters? Yeah, not not so much in the U.S., though I'm sure it's happened, but uh, in countries that do not have as strict laws mm-hmm. about... Well, I guess, obviously, yeah, the Dendy's got some unlicensed <laughs> character yeah. usage on those games. Okay, I can see that, but, but Dong uh, Dong Never Die? Yeah, <laughs> 
there is an Asian fighting game called Dong Dong Never Die, and they just put anything licensed in mm-hmm. it, and that's sort of the point of the game. The, I mean, everything is in it. Like, not even characters. They use licensed music. They rip the plots mm-hmm. out of movies and TV shows. So, like, if you play as the Terminator which is just taking footage from the movie Terminator and turning it into a fighting video game character. And then, like, when he wins, he drinks, like, Dasani water and I believe I can fly plays. (laughs) So it was just, they sort of tried to say how many licensed things Mm -hmm. can we put into a video game Mm -hmm. and get away with it because the laws in our country are not that strict about this. Yeah. And so they'll just add stuff to, like, people are like, oh, put Mario in it. And so they put Mario in it. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because to me that sounds like um, sort of the catchphrase of a broken English commercial for Viagra. Dong, dong, never die. I mean, I think that's sort of the title was supposed to sound like English people doing mm-hmm. it because it's called Dong, dong, never die in mm-hmm. English. And, and, and it's a Chinese game. And so I think it was supposed to sound like a parody of English speaking people making fun of Chinese names of things. And they're like, mm-hmm. well screw you, we're going to take all the stuff from your movies and put it in our game and not pay for it. <laughs> so, come a long way since the Fonz. Okay? It's uh, just Fonz, Julian. I know. God, that just that sticks in my craw. It, it was a kindred Josh. spirit of Josh. Yeah, I just, my craw is just stuck <laughs> right now. But it seems now there's a better handle on licensed properties in games. Um, it took a while, but you know, like obviously, um, Telltale and Lego, those are two yeah. companies I think. No, Josh sort of... and I have both been playing Lego Jurassic World, mm-hmm. which actually has all four Jurassic Park movies in it. And mm-hmm. it's so much fun to see that in Lego. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Lego Star Wars. I mean, it's just Avengers, Lego, Lego. I mean, I don't, you know, they got, you know, they got <laughs> I mean, everything. there probably is Lego, Lego, yeah. but, uh. No, I think it's a good idea to, mm-hmm. like, have an existing formula and then just put the licensed property over on top of that formula mm-hmm. instead of trying to work backwards. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, Lego works with everything. Yeah, I think, theoretically, the Lego game, yeah, I mean, you, I was thinking, like, oh, it would only be for certain things, but you could probably make a Lego die hard. Oh, you absolutely could. It would be so great. It, it actually probably would be pretty fucking great. I would, I would play that every day. Yeah. Oh, there was dude. a, I mean, there was a Die Hard game for the PS One. Yeah, but it wasn't the trilogy. There was no Legos in it. No, it was called Die Hard Trilogy. That was the first one was super solid. The first one was great. Yeah, it was like Just, a third person action game. Oh right ho here. ho! I got a machine gun. I mean, it was like. <laughs> oh, could you imagine having to build your machine gun out of Lego? It was great before you could use it. Yeah. Oh, so good. No, yeah. and then Telltale too. Like mm-hmm. they have an engine, and they sort of use their engine for all sorts of licenses, a pretty wide yeah. range. And I'm not the biggest fan of Telltale, but I think they have a formula that works. It, a lot of people... Works well enough, yeah. ...of those games. And I mean, I'm not even criticizing the games. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't appeal that much to me, even when they're really well-written. I think that's a good comparison, Lego and Telltale. You know, they found these formulas, and I mean, they've both done Jurassic Park. Yeah. Um, just the varying different effects, and, uh, you know, they Telltale then did, you know, Back to the Future and Walking Dead and all these things, and people seem to like it, you know. I mean, uh, it's not for me necessarily, but uh, you're seeing this now also mobile games. Look, elephants in the room, okay? Kim Kardashian releases a game, and it just destroys the universe. Yeah, I mean, I haven't played it. That game was super successful. And I mean, it was even well-reviewed. People yeah. really legitimately liked it. Yeah. But I mean, I think mobile games are the right market for a Kim Kardashian game about mm-hmm. becoming a celebrity. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Kanye West is rolling out a game. He is. And Not then he's sure making a new album that's, that's, that's named after a game system, too. And I can't remember what game oh, system Turbo it Graphics is. Graphics 16. I that's, it, that's it. I don't know. what That guy's whatever. Yeah. But. Wait, that... that that wasn't a joke? That was I'm serious? sure that was a joke. I mean, who knows with <laughs> Kanye West? <laughs> that, that's the thing. I can't, I legitimately can't tell if he's doing that or not. Fucking idiot. But, you know, and it's weird because there have been properties that have been much loved um, that just can't quite seem to figure out how to do it right. Simpsons, you know, they've had a couple of hits and a couple of misses. And I actually really liked the old NES mm-hmm. Simpsons games. Yeah, no, even the arcade one I thought was reasonable. The, the hit and run was okay, but, you know, like the Simpsons movie 
game I, that didn't really fare too well. Family Guy, they've had some... Yeah, I mean, I'm sure people like some of the mobile games, and that's probably better for Family Guy. Mm-hmm. I didn't play it, but Stick of Truth was supposed to be great. Yeah, and, and I'm actually... And there were some really bad South Park games before Stick of Truth, what too, the fuck? so... What's the name of the new one? That's just absolutely hilarious. I can't fractured remember. butthole. It's oh, fractured yeah. something. Fractured it's fractured butthole. Fractured butthole. It's, fractured. Yeah. it's fractured but, but hole. hole. Oh, okay, that's but, um, why I didn't when you remember say seeing it, the word butthole. Fractured fast. butthole. That's it's just yeah. fractured. I, I, I get it. That's fantastic. No, that game um, had critical success, I think. Did fairly well, considering it was in like development purgatory for quite some time. It just seemed like, oh, that's going to be a stinker. But came out and did its thing, and it was awesome. But then you have more subtle uses. Perhaps because the property, you know, and the, the development teams that are making them aren't necessarily American or household names. The Metro series. Yeah. Which is, I think, fantastic. Um, the greatest game of all time, The Witcher 3, or yep. The Witcher series in and of itself. And I mean, The Witcher is very faithful to its license, too, mm-hmm. from everything I've seen. And yeah. that's really cool. They even kept the unicorn yeah, sex. Yeah, we've already yeah. established and quoted verbatim unicorn sex. I mean, they took some things that really should have been impossible to translate into a video game and they pulled it off. And even the Darkness games mm-hmm. are based on comic books. Mm-hmm. I wasn't a fan of the second one. It was more streamlined. Yeah, I only played the first one. The first one was just fantastic. And I've never read the comics. But... Nor have I. Is that Dark Cow? Was it Black Cow? Top Cow. Top Cow. It's a fun thing to say. <laughs> it is. So then uh, everything kind of comes full circle. And now we have games that are being licensed. Obviously, movie games have been attempted Forever, you know. The first Silent Hill movie wasn't that bad. At least it visually looked... I mean, I don't think it was a good movie, Mm -hmm. but I think the art direction was good. I think it started out very promising. The Resident Evil movies have done gangbusters. They're not good. But they've made a lot of money. A lot of people enjoy them. Yeah, I think they adhere very little to the actual game. I mean, that's probably why they're successful because I think that's the much smarter path to take Mm -hmm. a lot of Well, I think the games are aren't faithful to the games. Yeah, well, the that's games now seem too. to be mimicking what the movies have been successful f- for and brought more of this insane action element into it to some success. Obviously, there's a uh, Assassin's Creed movie coming out that's probably it's sort of like trying to say this is going to be a legitimate attempt um, at video game movie time. I mean, so. somebody's got to make a good one eventually. Mm-hmm. They've been trying to make a Bioshock movie for ever. Mm-hmm. Man, Max Payne looked like it was going to be... Um, on the money and it had oh, it just was so disappointing it's weird it followed the story of the game almost too closely to the point where it just was nonsensical yeah. and then it didn't have any fucking slow motion gun shooting in there <laughs> I mean, you know should have should have got Zack Snyder <laughs> you, would have, you would, would have had a field day <laughs> god it would have been slow motion from start to finish yeah the credits would have been in slow motion uh uh halo uh, books i've heard the TV halo shows. books are really good i yeah. mean i have no desire to read them the mm-hmm. only I'm, thing i've I'm ever guessing enjoyed it, doing in halo is running people over with tanks mm-hmm. i'm but. guessing the people that enjoy the halo books are the same people that liked the star wars yeah, expanded that's probably universe true. <laughs> Yeah, you know how much I hate the Star Wars Expanded Universe. Yeah, so. I can't imagine a guy sitting there with his Pizza Hut pizza and his Doritos and his uh, Mountain Dew Code Red just fucking amped up on Halo books. I mean, <laughs> he's reading good for him. He's sitting there, oh, you fucking F-bomb. I eh, got know, sauce mom, on the pages. I'm going to on page 10, you know. <laughs> I mean, do you think that product placement in the Halo books, like Master Chief suddenly had a craving for Doritos, (laughs) and he'd be like, I have a craving for Doritos, I'm (laughs) just like Master Chief. In the ebook version, you can order Pizza Hut directly (laughs) from the game. You know, you could do that in EverQuest, except I think it was Domino's. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking hate Domino's. (laughs) The, the thing I'm super Let's step down from Yonoid. <laughs> <laughs> Cult classic Yonoid. Yeah. <laughs> the thing I'm really excited about right now is they're making a licensed... Well, Creed, people yeah. in LA have worked with people in Japan to create an actual licensed escape room based on the Zero Escape games, which are on the DS, the mm-hmm. 3DS, and the Vita. And mm-hmm. those games are basically a series of very complicated escape rooms that are 
largely based on numbers. And so you have like wristwatches with numbers and how you can solve puzzles are dependent on the numbers you have and the numbers other people have. It opens in April 2016. Mm -hmm. And I guess there are going to be actors. There are going to be escape rooms modeled after the actual escape rooms in the game. Mm -hmm. And so I'm making Josh go to LA with me Mm -hmm. and do this game. I'm so excited because I love those games and I love escape rooms and yeah and it's watches the first on it's the first licensed escape room in north america and then i'm like it's the first one ever and i looked it up and apparently in europe they have fallout escape rooms really? <laughs> licensed fallout escape rooms That's and i don't fun. i couldn't find out a lot about them because there wasn't a lot about them in english because mm-hmm. this was really continental europe mm-hmm. But there are a couple of countries where they have licensed follow escape rooms. So I assume it's escape the vault and get out to the wasteland. Yeah. So, I mean, that sounds super fun. They should yeah. bring them out here. I do them. Yeah, gosh, I got to say, I think we really run the gamut um, on this episode. We've been just bebopping and scatting all over the place, talking about licensed games. Now Oops. shit's being licensed off of games. Uh, you know, I think going forward, I'd like to see more properties handled um, like the earlier Arkham titles with as much sort of like realization of character and setting. But also the a ability to explore things that I, I'm not familiar with, like Metro or The Witcher that are realized in a way that are engaging and fun. I really would like to see a remastered version of E.T., I think. Um, not a cult classic, you annoyed. Absolutely not. I think if somebody could update the graphics on E.T., bring that bad boy out. Make it Telltale's E.T. Maybe add some motion control. <laughs> I really do stand by it. I think that was a game that just didn't yeah. get a fair shake. But <laughs> So, you know, with that, um, look forward to us coming back next week with another great episode. And the week after that, and the week after that, until the day that I fucking die. <laughs> Half Glass Gaming. Is it Ippy 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 out? I'd like to see a licensed game based on the movie License to Drive. Um, I mean, isn't isn't that a thing? I thought there was a License to Drive game. Mandy, if you can, uh, I'm probably wrong. Provide that for me. I'm probably mixing it up with some game with a similar name. Yeah, but I, I have to look it up just. You think you have it licensed to drive? <laughs> Licensed to be alive. Licensed to die. Uh, it was it was a Mary Kate and Ashley <laughs> licensed game called Mary Kate and Ashley Sixteen: License oh. to Drive. <laughs> oh, well, that just ruined everything. <laughs> Good about America.